I know this is a strange way to start, but I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm not here to teach you anything. Okay? Uh, if I were to add up the cumulative years of law enforcement experience in here, coupled with who's going to maybe be watching this online, I would probably just leave now um, because I am in awe of the people in this room and, and I respect and appreciate the knowledge that is in this room. Plus, you know, Robert Plant has a great quote. He says, there's nothing new under the sun. You just get out a new can of paint. And that's very true to me. Simple words with a powerful meaning. And we are going to get out a new can of paint today. Whether or not you decide to stick a brush in it, it's something we'll talk about a little bit later. But the interesting thing is that what I want to do today, just so you know, I always think it's good to have the end game in mind. I want to shift your vantage point a little bit. That's what I want to do. A hundred people can look at the very same thing all day, every day. You move them slightly left, a little bit up, and maybe just a tiny bit over to the right, and they see it in an entirely different way. That's my goal today. Um, my other goal is to make sure it's simple, because it's just how I roll. In my department and everywhere else, whether it's home or wherever, I want it to be as complicated as it has to be, and as simple as it can be. Because we live in a world that drags us away from that. Right? Point, click, read, point, click, read. If you don't hook me in the first five and a half milliseconds, then I'm moving on to another website. You know? And it, the world drags us at 100 miles an hour, and we don't smell the roses anymore. And sometimes we miss that. And sometimes when we miss that, there's collateral damage to missing that. So I'm always like, take a breath, breathe, slow down. It's okay. So that's what I want to do. I want to shift your vantage point today. It's an interesting topic. You know, why risk management? Uh, it's, it, it fascinates me. It fascinates me. We, we, we do it intuitively every day. We get up in the morning, it's 10 degrees out. We do not put on shorts and a t-shirt and go to work. We walk up to an intersection, a semi-truck is coming, we stop, we wait till it passes, we cross the street. It's risk management, we do it all the time. What's interesting is, at some point in time, um, it, it falls away. It exists in every organization, but I'm not sure that I like how it exists in organizations. Right? I mean, let's face it, every organization we talk about risk management, we have risk management seminars, we have risk management offices. If you go to everybody, they have, they'll shake their head. You know about risk management, right? Yeah, Dabs, I know what risk management. Can you tell me what it is? That's a whole different story. So I decided I was going to start to peel that onion back because I was curious because we don't plan on things to go wrong in our world. We don't plan on Bob wrecking the car and hurting himself. We don't plan on a pursuit going bad and taking a life. We don't plan on an excessive force complaint where you have to call somebody in and say, hey, this is not going to go well for you. But sometimes I wonder, do we plan enough for things to go right? And that's why I started to peel the onion back on this. And what I did is, so first, in due diligence, being a person of the 21st century, I thought, yes, I'll sit down on my computer. I pulled up Google. So I put in risk management definition. I got 110 million results in 0.72 seconds. Now, I'm old, so that's just always going to just, I'm just going to have to stare at that for a minute. Like, what do I do with that? So I decided, okay, okay, back off. Risk, it's two words, right? It's only two words. How bad could it be? So I said, I'm just going to do risk. Start there. 750 million results in 0.52 seconds. So I'm sitting there looking at 860 million results in less than a second and a half. I scrolled through a few of those. Wasn't working for me. I decided it's time to go old school. I started talking to people. Lots of people. Started talking to venue neutral organizations. Had nothing to do with law enforcement. I would go there. I said, you got a few minutes? People would work in the manage Office of Risk Management. I would ask to talk to them. And so what I discovered is, I won't tell you about the journey to get there, because that's a whole separate topic. But what I discovered is that risk management is simple. It's really simple. Not easy. We'll talk about that a little bit. Don't confuse simple and easy. But if you can start with simple, sometimes it gets easier. And I discovered during my journey, and it's still a journey, 
there's no destination. I discovered that there are three things that jumped out at me as I talked to people about why we don't do risk management like we maybe could or should. First one is a lack of consistency in, lack of consistency in its definition. The second one is a lack of consistency in who's responsible for it. And the third one is the lack of consistency in the implementation and accountability of it. Okay, so those three things, I decided I would attack those one at a time on my own before I rolled it out in a production environment. And I knew I was going to roll it out in some way because I'm a forgiveness rather than permission. I spent a lot of time in the principal's office explaining on the back end why I did something on the front end. Uh, it's just easier for me, and again, it's just my wiring, so I don't fight it. So the first one, I won't tell you about this journey either, but here's where I got with it. I decided that risk management is this, plain and simple. It's awareness plus action. That's all it is. A level of awareness tied to the right action. A level of awareness without the action, that's a problem. That's where the problems start. It's also completely front end. It's 100% on the front end. Okay? It's all preventive in theory. That's where it should all happen. Second thing is, um, who's responsible for it? Everybody. Everybody's responsible for risk management. The problem is people run from it because there is 860 million versions of it out there along with who's responsible, along with this and that. And I mean, right, we send to people to, to, to seminars on it all the time, and there's as many seminars, are, they're all different. It's an observation, not a criticism. So I decided that, uh, that I would attack those two things by, by setting expectations. So at the time, I was a patrol bureau commander in Kansas City, Missouri. So I worked for right about 1,000 people. Yep, I, I said that right. I work for them. You see, the, the pyramid's always upside down. They, they don't work for me, I work for them. So I was going to call all the division commanders in, and I do stupid things like this. I added up the years of service that was in front of me, and it was like 537 years of experience of people I grew up with. I was going to set expectations for them, so I canceled the meeting like three or four times because I was like, what do I do? So anyway, I got them all together, and we had this meeting. I said, I have a new set of expectations for you. Historically, everybody thinks expectations are policies and procedures, but they're not really. Those are the guidelines by which we live. Expectations are what I expect of them. And I don't know that they've ever had it done before. So this was new ground. They all got pens and papers out and you know, got the rolling of the eyes. And I said, I put it all away. You don't need a pen or pen pencil. You don't have to write a thing down. It's not, you're not going to need anything on paper today. I said, I defined risk management form as awareness plus action. I said, it's all front end. I said, it's everybody's responsibility. I'm going to hold you accountable for risk management in that, those parameters in your, in your um, respective houses. Didn't take less than a week. I got an opportunity because I knew what happened. They go back, hey, how was the staff meeting? That kind of talked about uh, risk management stuff, you know, like we've heard for 25 years. You know, I'm not saying it was that negative, but you know, risk management gets blurred over. So I got a package on my desk. It said that they were recommended four suspension days for Officer Bob, who'd wrecked his car, he totaled it out, $20,000 car, $25,000 worth of equipment. He's driving 18 miles an hour over the speed limit, five suspension days. So I read through it, and I draw a little yellow, little yellow sticky with a question mark at this line. In the sergeant's endorsement, it says, it was only a matter of time because of the way he was driving that he wrecked this car. So I sent it back. I knew I'd get a call, because all it had was a yellow sticky with a question mark. Um, they said, hey, what's, what's this? I said, oh, that's where, you see, this is applicable to everybody. I was serious. You see, there was a level of awareness six months ago. And I'm just curious if we could find out what the sergeant did about it. So we had awareness, but I can't find the action. I already knew what the answer was. We didn't do anything about it. We just waited until there was an epic fail, and then we recommended five days. And he goes, well, you know, he didn't, he didn't do anything, and, 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 and you're serious about this, aren't you? I said, I am. I'm very serious about it. Because I owe, I owe all of you my best, whatever that is. I owe you front-end prevention, not back-end discipline. We're going to have those things, right? The one percenters, the things that come up we just can't control. You know, that's okay. That's not what I'm talking about. So he said, well, what do you want me to do? Am I supposed to write the sergeant? What am I supposed to do? And which, you know, speaks to an epidemic of issues. I said, no, no, look, this is a huge cultural shift. I want you to have a conversation 
with the sergeant. I want you to explain to him that this is real. I want to explain to him that awareness plus action happens at his level. And I met a nice young sergeant over here. She just got promoted. The most powerful rank on the department. I'll argue with you that that's where risk, 90% of the risk is mitigated or incurred on a department is at that supervisor level. I can bluster and fluster in there and say all I want. They look at the end of the table and I live or die by the sergeants up or down like this. So I said, oh, by the way, I'm sending the, officers to, the officer to eight hours of training at the driving, at, up at our driving academy. He's not getting any suspension time. There's organizational responsibility here. Yeah, he wrecked the car. And yeah, we let him wreck it to a degree. So I'm going to start the cultural shift by an example. So I know at that point in time there were several fit for duties written for me uh, at that point in time. I don't think any of them actually got approved. But, you know, and I understand that because you see the, the philosophies that we're talking about, they, they don't exist. These concepts don't exist in any real form in the 860 million hits. So that's either a badge of honor or an epiphany or it's fodder for a fit for duty, one of the two. So I decided I would continue to roll it out. And what I found was that it does a couple of things. One, it gets rid of zip line discipline. Bob wrecked car. Bob gets written up for wrecked car, zips up to the colonel. Colonel approves the suspension days. Bob's ticked. Because intuitively, you know, this did not happen overnight. So what we did is we built exit ramps where the sergeant, the captain, and the major all had ownership in risk management. It's rank neutral, it's position neutral, and it works. If you persist without exception into making it habit on your department. Why do I know it works? I can give you a million examples. I'll give you one that jumped out at me. Thousand people in the patrol bureau. All of them are represented by a union, the Fraternal Order of Police. I respect the union. I think we're all trying to do the same thing, frankly. If we're all trying to make a better life for them, come on into my office. Let's talk about it together. Three years, we had zero substantiated grievances. We only had two filed. You can take all the other quantitative data, but to me, that's indicative of folks that believe that you are being equitable with them. Fair is another thing. Fair is a grease pig in a 40-acre field. You know, we could talk about fair all day. But, you know, frankly, equitable, that's something we can attain. And here's the other thing. We all know what risk is when we see it. I didn't have to look through those 750 million hits to figure out what risk is. We all know what it is. And here's an example of how to make sure that the thing is, that the thing doesn't become a thing before it's a thing. Said Dr. Seuss would be proud. And that's where the Sasonian comes in, right? The thing is to make sure the thing doesn't become a thing before it's a thing. Okay? Because if you can make sure the thing doesn't become a thing, then it's no thing. And if you just hit the space bar, that becomes nothing. Nothing for us is good. So I like to go out. I like to have boots on the ground. I like to wander around. They can never find me in my office. So I'll share this story with you, and then I'll wrap up. So I'm out on the line, right? I have the patrol bureau during the post-Ferguson time. Pretty challenging opportunity. Everything in my world is either an obligation or an opportunity. Do I have to get it? Do I have to do it or do I get to do it? I got to manage the patrol bureau during Ferguson. I learned a lot of things. So I'm out there on the line at a protest because I like to be out there. It's where you get a feel for things. I look over, there's a SWAT, there's a SWAT guy because they're trying to shut down the interstate with uh, soccer cones. We can't let them do that. Don't know where that comes from, but we can't let them do that. Don't know where their idea to do that came from. Anyway, I look over and I, and I see it unfolding, right? Every one of us has a scenario in our head, right? The, we got the giant, this is not a gun, cut out, hands up, don't shoot. I, I'm not criticizing the message, just giving you an example. And he is blaring his bullhorn in this guy's, in, in the SWAT guy's face. And you know what he's saying. You know what the rhetoric is, right? So I'm watching, I'm watching the fuse go, and we know what happens if it, gets, if there's, if it goes away, okay? There's a lot of opportunity there. So I walk over, right level of awareness, I walk over, I tap him on the shoulder. I said, hey, walk with me for a second. So he walks with me, but he does it grudgingly because he's looking over his shoulder with the, I'm, I'm be right back to stand by you in just a second. So I say, hey, walk with me for a minute. So I walk away, I said, hey, how's it going, man? He goes, do you hear what they're saying? You hear what they're saying? I said, no, not really. Of course I heard what they're saying. I said, oh, you mean the protesters? I said, oh, you know, I said, hey, your brother's in the military, right? 
I said, oh, he's lost, I understand he lost some friends. Yeah. I said, tell him thank you for his service and sorry about his friends. But I said, and thank him for putting his life on the line every day so these folks can come say what they need to say and want to say and can say in this awesome country that we live in. I said, because you know, we're really here to use good judgment, not to judge. And I said, I said, but I get it. I get that you're, you're upset and ticked, and I have a question for you. He said, yeah. I said, now it's a rhetorical question. I want an answer. But I said, I saw you were staring at the giant cutout that said, this is not a gun. He goes, I was. I said, what's the one thing you want to do when you come to work? I want to get home. I want to get my partner home. All of our SWAT guys are partnered up. And you know what it is. They work out, train, eat, work out, train, eat. And I was one of them for a while, so that's, I can make fun of them. You can only make fun of them if you were one of them for a while. So I said, hey, do you think while you were staring at the cutout gun, you might have missed a real one in the crowd? Just something to think about. Took him to another part of the line, plugged him back in. It was all good. Didn't hear from him. Two weeks later, he calls me. He said, hey, boss, I said, uh, I, I want to follow up with you. I said, you don't have to follow up with me. I said, you know, I'm glad we had a good outcome. He said, no, I would have missed the gun. 100%. Would have missed it. He goes, and I'm not there yet, but I got a whole different way of looking at things. So this simple paradigm shift applied a thousand times over is powerful and it matters. People say that, or one of my favorite quotes is that, uh, Greatness is many things done right day after day after day. You do this right day after day after day, and it is a path to greatness for your department. It's a path to greatness for me as an individual. And sometimes, sometimes it's one event on one day. I'll say this in the hypothetical because I don't want to tie it to a real event because it very well may be. Medal of Valor officer, he's in a fight for his life. Helps a little further away than usual. Every single one of us in this room can have their buttons pushed and get to that point. He was done, he was spent, his tools didn't work, he was out of gas, and the cavalry did arrive. And you know what happens when the cavalry arrives, right? We get him, we get control, we get him in cuffs, it's supposed to be over, right? It's not over sometimes when you're spent. It's not over sometimes when emotion is ruling your world, okay? He lost his job for excessive force, 60 days in jail shock time. We stand in front of bullets for each other. And the thing I always wondered about that is, we're a hypervigilant group. You'll never convince me that some officers on that scene didn't know what was going on. They owed it to their brother to tap him out. They, they had to tap him out that day. So I've given him permission. I said, look, I go south. I go off the, you know, I'm not acting right. You do something about it. I seem to be depressed. I don't want to talk to anybody, and I got a lot of words. So if Bob shows up with no words at roll call, you better do something about it because something's wrong with me. I'm spent and I'm out in traffic. You better pull me back. I may be mad now, but I will thank you later. So I'll finish with this. Um, what's important now? Last most powerful question that Brian talks about all the time, you'll have to decide. Uh, heard a lot of things here today, and, I, and I, I know I've changed my perspective and added to my perspective. Uh, the X factor is you. What are you going to do with it? It's a, it's a new can of paint. It's a new way of looking at things. And it's a powerful way of looking at things. And it makes a difference. And it's simple and you can roll it out today. Thank you all for your time, and thank you for listening, and Godspeed for everybody. <laughs>